Craft Warehouse followers, today we are going to be doing a resin pour into these nice wood coasters from Color Pour. We are going to be making a, an ocean scene, so we're going to be using some blue colors here today. Along with, we are also using Color Pour's supply kit, so it's got some nice little Dixie cups. I am This I have used multiple times, so you're going to see they're a little beat up. Along with, they have some stir sticks. They have pipettes, which we aren't using today. They have some nice gloves. And then, I'm using a silicone mat today, but they also have a really nice uh, plastic covering. So if you don't have that, you're able to cover the surface you're working on for when the resin drips. Um, another thing you're going to want today is a heat gun. So if you don't, this is what I'm going to be using. It's one of our embossing heat tools. There are other heat guns out there. And then I got some popsicle sticks. I'm using two acrylic inks here. So I'm using the marine blue and the blue roundy. And then a white acrylic ink as well. And then I have resi blast. So that's going to help my cells form. And then we are using Envirotex today. Um, this is the 16 fluid ounces, which we won't use at all. If you aren't the biggest fan of Envirotex, we also do have this uh, resin and resin hardener from Color Pour. Again, this is food safe. Um, it does have a little quicker dry time than the Envirotex, but if you wanted to try something new, a little bit less expensive, there's this guy. And then I'm also using this measuring cup from Envirotex. It's just really nice. It's got some good lines on there so I can make sure that I'm getting that resin in the hardener um, even because that's going to make sure my piece is fully curing properly without being sticky. Um, a couple other prep things I would kind of suggest if you have long hair, making sure you're pulling it up, wearing a mask because this can be pretty strong. Also, um, painter's tape. So I did go ahead and tape off all the bottoms of these guys, but you're going to want to make sure they're nice and taped down. I mean, you could always sand off any pieces you have, but this is going to help uh, for when we do over pour that resin and it flows. You can just peel this right off and you should have a smooth back. Now to put that on, I did just over, you over tape it so it's hanging over the edge. And then I just took an X-Acto knife and got it really nice and close up to that edge. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and set these guys to the side. I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, measuring cup. And I'm going to go ahead and pour my resin hardener and hardener into it. I'm going to pour two ounces each, and that's going to be equal, equal parts. One thing about these bottles I'd like to point out is a white cap goes with a white font. So um, that's going to be your resin with the white font. It's going to be the black cap with the black font for your hardener. Nice thing about that is it's making sure you're not putting the cap on the wrong bottle and then you'd seal it shut. Um, so that's really handy. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pour the resin first. And again, I'm going to do two ounces and make sure I get that nice and even. All right, I got two ounces there. Now I'm going to pour that hardener in and get two ounces as well. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and take that large popsicle stick 
and I'm really going to mix this. I'm going to mix this for two minutes, making sure I'm getting the edge, the bottom, all of it pulled in and mix really, really well. That's a really important key in the resin process. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set a timer for two minutes and go ahead and mix this. Okay, now that we got the resin nice and mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and split them into my three little cups here. I am gonna make sure that I have some white or some clear resin left over because I'm gonna need that. So I have these all pretty even. I do have a, I did leave a little bit more into the clear because I can always create more color if need be. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drip my color into here. Go, go ahead and make sure you give these a good shake if you haven't used them. Um, they do tend to settle down in their color and you don't want any of your ink not to be strong enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and do about six drops. And I'll see what that go looks like. And we're going to do the same with the next two colors. And then that white. I'm going to go ahead and take my little stir sex to it. You really want to make sure you get your color really nicely mixed in there. So you don't have any streaks of clear. Especially if you're using pigment powder, um, you could end up having like clumps. So getting it nicely mixed is very good. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same with this guy, the marine blue. Again, just mixing away. It looks good. Now, if you didn't wanna get this uh, color pour kit, you could use a Dixie cup and just some, again, popsicle sticks and mix with the popsicle sticks. Nothing wrong with that. They're disposable. I do try to uh, make sure I have most of my stuff as reusable as I can. When you do it enough, I feel like it really pays off in the end. Okay. I like how my colors are with the six drops. I am going to go ahead and add a drop of this Resi Blast in there. Again, it's just really gonna help those um, cells and create lacing in the white wave. I'm just gonna make sure that's really nicely mixed in. Mix, mix, mix. Okay. So I'm gonna bring our pieces in here. I'm gonna do one at a time. So I'm gonna start with this blue. And I'm going to start up near the edge. I'm just going to do a small piece. And then I'm going to go in with that marine blue. And then I'm going to come in with some clear. And then I'm going to come in with some white. And again, that white has 
the Resi Blast in it. I might even try to do another line up clear and then go ahead and put another thing of white. Just really as a preference. And then from here, I'm gonna come in with that heat gun. kind of go in with this uh, stick here and kind of spread some color over to that corner okay that's looking good I'll probably come back through and pop the bubbles but I'm gonna go ahead and keep pouring all these coasters again I'm starting with that blue almost looks navy on camera Going in with that marine blue. Now, if you didn't get it all the way to the edges, you can always use your little uh, spatula here. I'm going to come in with some clear. And then I'm going to come in with some white with that Resi Blast in there. And I'm going to come in with some more clear. Just a little bit more white. And then I'm going to take that heat gun to it. Just kind of jizzing it. And then as the heat goes away, you can see the waves really start to form. I might have to kind of come back in and jizz it a little bit, but for right now, I like that. Uh, yeah, actually, I am. One thing about resin is every pour is going to look a little bit different. Like every single one of these coasters is just going to look a tad different, which is awesome. And again, I'm not filling this quite to the top because I want to be able to have room to kind of blow that resin just a tad with that heat gun. And then I'm going to come in with that clear. Now heat gun again. Oops. Take the heat gun to this one again. And 
And I like the way this one looks. So I'm just going to slightly go over with it back and forth, popping all those bubbles. We're going to go ahead and see how I end up liking this one here. I might pour a little bit more clear into it. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let these dry and then we'll come back and see what they look like and put that last coat on it. So that last coat, when we do put it on, it's gonna go ahead and drip over. Um, I do wanna point out, if you don't wanna waste your resin, I did end up having um, a little bit extra. So you don't quite need two. I'd probably do about one and a half ounces to be able to fill this up initially. All right, we're going to go house followers. So it's been 48 hours um, since I let this dry and finished up with you guys. Um, as you can see that the white with that resi blast really spread throughout on that clear part, getting some really beautiful lacings throughout. The best thing is with resin is none of these look alike. And I love that. Um, so they're all going to be nice and unique. And sometimes the piece that you least liked ended up being your favorite. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I already have my resin mixed. Um, I do have, cause I'm finishing up another project. I do have about, um, I did two ounces of each, but I believe you're only gonna need about um, an ounce and a half of both the resin and an ounce and a half of the hardener. So we're gonna go ahead and get pouring. So we're gonna fill this up and let it overflow. That's why you want the cups, right? So we're gonna fill this. I'm gonna kind of spread it out. Again, remember when you're mixing the resin, equal parts, and then also, um, Sorry, right, I'm watching. <laughs> also, you want to make sure you're mixing it for two minutes. I'm going to come in with that heat gun. Pop in some of those air bubbles. I tend to mix a little too fast, so I tend to get a little bit more air bubbles than needed in my resin. Now one thing is, if you didn't want these to overflow, you could just fill them to where they got on the, t to the top layer and then you could sand down around it. But I want it all to be covered because I don't want this wood to accidentally get liquid on it and then have any issues later on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and spread it over to the edges, help it out a little. So this one's pretty much on the edge. I do like to go ahead and make sure I'm getting resin all the way around on the edges. I think when you do that, it tends to um, help the resin flow a little bit better versus just hitting a dry spot. Very similar to um, if you do any paint pouring, you sometimes just have those little rascal spots that paint doesn't want to flow to. And since resin is a fluid, adhesive like paint pouring is fluid you can have the same issues okay 
Oops. Again, just helping the resin flow a little bit. So if you also, sometimes you can put more resin in one cup or in one of these coasters than the other. So some of these might need more or less resin. Again, you're just going to have to kind of judge it. Do what's best. Maybe you are going to need two ounces of resin here if you didn't use everything from previous. I just want to roughly give you guys some measurements to kind of help guide you along the way. If you weren't able to get this fully covered, um, you could always pour some more resin on over it if needed as well. Okay, I'm so excited how these turned out. If you're anything like me, my house has those dark navy blues in it right now. So these coasters are going to be perfect. And who does not love the ocean? You might not like to get in the ocean, but you at least love the sound of the beach or the waves hitting the beach. Okay, you guys, so again, I want to make sure I get all my edges flowed over and kind of help it out on the sides, just like you would um, when you're paint pouring. That's just going to help the resin be able to flow over when it's needed and to help level out just a tad bit better. So I am going to come back in with that heat gum because I do have some bubbles that I really need to pop. going back and forth the heat gun will also kind of help move the resin here in this step so you want to be careful that you're not letting it just sit in one spot and overflow or too close that it's blowing it off Okay, and again, now I'll let these dry like they are, and we will come back when they're nice and dried and peel off and see the end result. Okay guys, now my piece is dry. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off the back side, but you can see that I got all my edges nicely coated. Um, it's evened out really nice. If you still have any dips and you really don't want that, you can go ahead and pour some more resin on it and let it dry again um, for the time, but I have no problems with it, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this back. You should have some really clean lines now. And some awesome coasters. And get this off now if you do have any problems in getting these off um, you could take your heat gun and just heat it up just a tad on parts that have really bad resin but I'm not really having any issues going along peeling this off there are a couple places but I should be able to get them off all right And you'll just want to do this for all three of your coasters. If you have any uneven spots in the back too, um, you can also sand it down. But if you are able to just take that again heat gun and just scrape off any resin that might have gotten on there, that's going to be your best bet. So that's what the back looks like. And then I have my front. I'm super excited how these look. Um, now one thing, I do have one that I'm probably going to coat again. 
you can see that I didn't get that part of the wood covered and there's actually no resin um, all the way up to the top so there's a little lip so I probably will pour a little bit more it looks like I probably didn't actually have it on an even surface and that's why I have that little dip there so just look for those if you like them totally rock with them and it'll be awesome all right you guys thank you for joining us on making these resin ocean pours in these wooden coasters i hope you guys have a great day and happy crafting